Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Teslaverse. Today we're going to be talking about Tesla, primarily because it's continuing to see a spectacular move. So if you guys like the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the premium list and the Telegram channel in the description below if you want access to uh, more discussion or exclusive content. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. So we made a video the other day, and it was showing this you know, regression analysis of Tesla. We first showed the same regression analysis months ago um, when, you know, the last time before we made a video over here, the, the, the actual valuation of Tesla was in this region. So I did not just make this, uh, this regression here. Um, but the yellow line is quote unquote the fair value of Tesla according to this logarithmic regression analysis. Um, the green area, this green region down here, is historically our support zone. So, you know, the time when, historically speaking, it's a really good time to be buying Tesla. And then the red line, the red band, is historically speaking, the local top to the Tesla price. Now, the nice thing about, you know, this regression is that, you know, it does monotonically go up. So even if, you know, even if this red band here, maybe the local top was, you know, at... 188 back in 2013 it can reach that same level in subsequent you know local tops and the price is actually continuing to go up now we talked about this you know at length in a video a few days ago but one of the things i wanted to talk about in this video that i did not talk about in that video is the undervaluation versus overvaluation so you can generally see you know the the, the price of tesla the regression line is cutting through that price so we can see the regions where Tesla is either undervalued, like in this region here, or overvalued, like in this region here. Again, it undervalued over here, and then now we're in that overvalued phase. So if we put this other one on, this here, the yellow line, shows the, you know, it's basically the, the price against the regression line. So what is that difference? Um, you can see, if we were to draw a line, um, from, you know, basically, let's say we draw it from the bottom there and we, we just draw it all the way across. This is what it is. And then if we take it from the other bottom and draw it across, the, it shows that our, you know, our regression line or the price with respect to the regression line tends to come down to around 40, um, around 40 to 50% uh, below the regression line. What does this mean? Well, if it's 40%, and the fair value is the white line, which is 100% or just one, you know, it's just the fair value, uh, then 0.4 would mean it's undervalued by 60% because it's, it's, you know, it's 0.6 away from one. Um, and likewise, in the same manner, you know, if it's 50% if it's below, then that means it's 50% it's undervalued. Um, if it's above it by 2.34, that means it's over that price, uh, the, the price is over the regression line by 2.34x. So this is the way to understand um, what I'm showing here. So again, the white line is the is the fair valuation, and um, this the, the the band down here corresponds to the price coming into this region where that green band is, which is around 50 to 60 percent undervalued. The price is undervalued with respect to the regression line. In the same manner. If we draw it uh, at our local tops, so we'll draw one to correspond to these, you know, these uh, sister peaks in a sense. There's, you can see the, um, the two, this peak right here and this other one right here. Um, and then we can also uh, draw another one. Let me scroll this down a little bit. We can draw another one at the other peak that you see a little bit later on. And we'll draw that one across. So here we are. Um, we're, no, we're looking at a monthly time scale right now. Um, but you can see that when, when the price got approximately, you know, 2.32x above the regression line, it did retrace. It came back up to the top part of the regression line, which was around 2.5x, okay? And then the next time it came back up to the, at the very end, it was, again, similar to the first time where it was around um, 2.32, 2.33, somewhere in that, in that area. Now, the interesting thing or, or nice thing is that despite the fact that the overvaluation was the same as it was here and here, um, the price uh, in 2014 was about $100 higher than it was a year before, even though the overvaluation was the same. 
Uh, the reason is because you know it's it's with respect to a monotonically increasing function. Therefore, if the overvaluation is the same a year later, then the price is is going to be higher. And you can see the price in September of 2013 was around 197 or so at the top, or around 193. And then in 2014, at the top, it was around 282. So there was a significant difference there, um, despite the fact that it was overvalued by the same amount. And then at the peak, where we came to the top, and it was around 2.5x overvalued, you can see the price was around 253. Um, and this corresponded to these three peaks you see here before ultimately it started to fall. Now, the interesting thing, as we mentioned in the previous video, is despite the fact that the, you know, the overvaluation is falling, it's basically falling because the price is, it, I mean, it's kind of going down a little bit, but for the most part, it's just moving sideways. But since it's moving sideways and the regression line is monotonically increasing, then we're going to eventually get back to our fair value line and eventually get back to our undervaluation uh, bottom if it continues to go you know, in that same direction and doesn't start increasing again uh, with respect to the regression line. So, uh, you know, and we made this video a while back. I didn't just make this video a couple days ago. We made videos on Tesla a few months ago as well showing this exact regression. I had not put it in TradingView for my own analysis, but it was something I was showing uh, on, you know, using my own tools to create the charts. Um, so I, I, I want to know what you guys think, you know, what do you guys think about the regression analysis? One of the things I should note is that it does not mean we cannot go above the re regression line up here, it does not mean we cannot go above this red band. It certainly does not mean that, especially with the current economy, you know, you always have to say hedge your bets in a sense, this is not financial advice. Um, but with the Fed printing, uh, you know, constantly with, with, you know, the entire market, you know, being uh, kind of artificially propped up, uh, you know, there's really no telling how high Tesla could go. But with that said, with that said, I've personally started to, to DCA some cells in this region. And the reason is because, you know, I actually, uh, I mean, I'll be honest, I, I did not own a lot of Tesla back over here, um, back in 2013, but I have been accumulating it for years now. And, and looking at the price go up 10x over such a short period of time, um, it, you know, it, it's really hard not to take profits. You know, it's it's not to say that in 10 years Tesla won't be higher, but in, in terms of, you know, okay, we made a good investment, you know, it was a calculated risk and, and it paid off and we're now up 10x in about a year. And, you know, it, it's it's just hard not to take profits. And, and I haven't sold all of my Tesla position, but I have started selling um, decent portions of it, uh, primarily just because I'm, I'm happy with the investment that I made. And despite the fact that I don't know if this is going to be the top or not, I'm happy with taking profits at that regime just because my goal is not necessarily to try to time the top because I think it's a fruitless exercise or a pointless exercise that you really can never get perfect anyways. Um, my point is, or my focus is, is to make money, right? And, and, and we're up 10x. I mean, just let that sink in. Like, I mean, Tesla is up 10x in 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 a year or so if we were to take a measured move again we did this in the last video you know from this bottom here to the top it was around you know it was it was around an 866 percent increase or so i probably didn't draw it exact and if you draw a similar one over here to the top of the wick we're already we're already around that region uh around 800 uh you know close to 900 percent um, and if we just draw it to say the body of the candle, you can see we're currently at 754% or so. I'm not, I'm not drawing it exact by any means. Um, but this type of a move over you know, approximately one year, it, it doesn't happen that often. And just personally, for, for my own, for my own um, investments, my risk tolerance when it's getting up into this re regime where it's you know, at the top of the regression band and um, the risk level is, is higher than it ever has been, where we're coming back into the, the highest point, it's been overvalued with respect to the regression line, historically speaking. Um, for me personally, it's just a good time to start selling. Uh, with that said, if you're, if you're staying in the market, you're not selling, I, I salute you and I, I wish you the best of luck. And I, I hope Tesla continues climbing to 2000 to 3000 and beyond. 
Um, I do still have a small portion of it left, so I'll, I'll be right there with you, but, but certainly not um, as much as, I, as I've had up until, you know, up until I made the video a couple days ago where I said, all right, guys, it's getting dicey. We're getting into this, into this uh, red area where historically this is the time um, where Tesla does seem to kind of uh, form its top or so. So um, one, of the, one of the other things I wanted to, to point out was if you draw a trend angle, so if you draw, say, a trend angle from, say, you know, let's take it from the top down to the bottom there, it's negative 40%, okay? If you take it from the very top to the bottom. If you take it from, say, you know, not this short-term rise, um, but at this point to the bottom, it's around negative 29%. So 40%, 29%. And then if you also take it from, say, this top to the bottom down here, what do you see? It's around 38%. Okay, so similar to uh, you know this point here, and then if you take it from, um, let's say take it from this region because we're, we're not taking it from this bottom point, we're, ta we're taking it from right before it dipped. So let's just take it from this region here, um, and we, we take it to the bottom. You can see it's around 21%. So these moves are fairly similar. I mean, they're not identical by any means. They're fairly similar. In the same manner, taking a trend angle from the bottom to the top, it's 74 degrees there. The first peak is 80 degrees, so we'll first draw 80 degrees. The second peak is at an angle, we already know it's, I mean, it overlaps, so we already know it was 70 degrees. If you take the bottom here and draw it to the top, we're looking at around 72 degrees. So these moves are very similar to one another. Um, you know, there's not a, a huge difference between them. They say that, you know, history does not repeat itself, but it does often rhyme. Uh, so just take this into consideration. I know a lot of people are, are skeptical of, of this type of analysis, uh, but it's just personally what I like to use. And I should remind people that are taking this analysis to heart, I will also caution you as well to say, you know, all models are wrong, but some are useful. So we know this. I mean, you know, a lot of models, there's no model that is, is really a, a, a perfect, um, you know, a perfect representation of, of what's going on in the real world. But some of those models are, are useful enough that they can provide you valuable information, enough value that it's worth looking at them in the first place. And for me, looking at this model is at least worth looking at in the first place because historically, it does seem to do a good job at, at showing where the bottom is. And while we don't know if the local top is going to be in this region, it does kind of clarify what I already think and that it's overvalued, um, that Tesla is overvalued significantly right now. And you can kind of see that same sentiment uh, and, and type of price movement also occurred back in 2013. One of the things that, you know, one of the things you see discussed with Tesla right now a lot, if you go to any forum, is are we in a speculative bubble? Um, one of the reasons why I do think we are in a speculative bubble, that Tesla is in a speculative bubble, is just because, well, I mean, first of all, I, I feel like this is what the math shows. Um, second of all, if you dare suggest that it's, you know, that this is not the new norm and suggests that maybe, you know, maybe we're going to retrace soon and, and this is not sustainable in the long term, you just get, you know, you get scolded, you say, no, there's no way, you know, stocks like Tesla, stocks like Amazon, these are basically taking over, you know, taking over um, uh, the markets and, and uh, they're basically paving the new way for, you know, this is what, you know, these companies today are going to look like, they're just going to continue going up, getting market share. Um, well, again, every speculative bubble, people always think this. With, with cryptocurrency, we talk about Bitcoin. Every speculative bubble that Bitcoin is in, it's always a new paradigm shift. It's, it's, never this, it's, it's always the same thing. It's, there's, nothing any, there's never anything new about it. People always feel the same way. If you try to, if you try to warn them that you know, we're, we're getting a little bit out of hand here, you're just written off as you know, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and, and you're, you're just not on board with the mission that everyone else is on. But at the same time, hindsight, you know, you look back at, say, the end of 2017 for Bitcoin and you recognize, oh, yeah, I mean, every signal was there that we were in a speculative bubble. Even a similar fit like I did to Tesla, I did for the, the, the market cap of crypto, and it yielded the same thing. Um, so my point is, is um, at the end of the day, no one can tell you exactly where the Tesla top is going to be. Uh, no one can tell you if it's going to happen at the top of my regression line, which is close to $1,900. I think it's just shy of $1,900. If you zoom in, um, I mean, there's no secrets here. If you zoom in, 
uh, it just it just curves off to the side just because it hasn't accounted for that day yet but if you zoom in you can see that the the peak here came to around you know around eighteen hundred dollars and the the peak of the regression line would be currently at around 1900 or so so once this daily data comes in it'll be around 1900 um so this is where it shows that this peak happening it, it, it'd be kind of interesting if if this wick was the peak and it went right up to kind of the top of that band that would be uh, very impressive i'm not i'm, I'm certainly not uh counting on that yet though we'll, we'll see what happens over the over the coming weeks to see if tesla can break through um and again if, if tesla does break through and and continues going on up then you know we'll, we'll still talk about tesla we'll still look to see you know okay how far is it overvalued are we are we getting to say the 2.5 overvaluation region or are we getting even higher one of the things i wanted to alert you to is i'm going to pull up a four hour chart which i hardly ever do on this channel but if i do pull it up you can see that the overvaluation actually reached around 2.6 uh, or somewhere in that region. Let me zoom in here so I can get a more accurate. So it reached around 2.6, okay, on the four hour time frame. Now, if we zoom all the way back to the last time that Tesla was in that region, um, you know, we also reached approximately at that level. So you can see the last time we were at around 2.6 four on the four hour chart and the other ones were peaking at around 2.4 uh, somewhere in that region okay so you know note that we are in that overvaluation territory that has historically been our resistance with respect to the fair valuation line um so let me know what you guys think about it uh remember to subscribe to the channel if you guys like the content uh, i would really appreciate it if you do um also I would encourage you to check out the Telegram channel in the description below. We do have, um, you know, you can go talk if you, you can go talk about uh, Tesla, you can go talk about cryptocurrency, you really can go talk about stocks, whatever you really want to talk about. Um, but I do think it's it's worth checking out if, if you're if you're interested in, in quantitative finance, uh, looking at some of these charts that I don't really feel like you're going to find a lot of other places um, and just kind of keeping tabs on things. If you want access to exclusive content, I do have a premium list. You can find it at intothecryptoverse.com. Despite the fact that it's called Into the Cryptoverse, we do cover other things. We, we have a risk metric for the S&P 500. We have a risk metric for cryptocurrencies. You'll get access to a Google Sheets dashboard, which has this regression of Tesla. It has the regression analysis of Tesla on it. So I think that would be useful if you're, if you're wanting to stay up to date with it instead of waiting for, say, my next video on it. Uh, definitely check out the premium list um, and also you get access to a weekly report and a weekly premium video um, in which case this last week I went over modern portfolio theory and looking at the sharp ratio and the Sortino ratio of weighting various cryptocurrencies in your portfolio so let me know what you guys think about this content in the in the comment section below please subscribe and turn your notifications on click the bell icon if you want you know to get notified when we have future videos on on whatever I'm making videos on that day, but certainly we're gonna we're gonna follow Tesla, and and see if you know see if this overvaluation phase that has historically been our our limit are we gonna get held there again, or is Tesla gonna pave the way for you know kind of you know to just break out and, and do something that it has never done before? Um, so we'll follow the model. We'll see what happens. Uh, remember to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.